Hey everybody, Spine Tips Pressing here. Does lightning strike twice? Yes, it does. Let me tell you, there are key elements inside this early 1980 series that you can learn about to help you find future blockbuster titles and pick them up for cheap early on. And who knows, maybe someday they'll become worth a lot of money like the Ninja Turtles. <music> So as you can see, what I've got before me are uh, my run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics from uh, the mid to early 80s. I have uh, issue four, first print, five, six, seven, and eight. Now at the time that I collected these books, I actually did so uh, on the request of a friend who was a little more involved in comics than I was. And uh, the Turtles had not taken off at all. Uh, they were popular uh, with collectors, without a doubt. But to the extent that they are now, they hadn't quite hit that level. And what the Ninja Turtles books, Eastman and Laird's books did, was they really provided something that was really original and unique at the time. And... I think there's a lot that we can learn as investors and collectors from these books. Now, granted, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were picked up into cartoons and snowballed into toys and movies, and they're incredibly popular, and they'll always be incredibly popular uh, intellectual property. But at the time... They really weren't. And I think when you want to try to find a great big hit, you've got to look for something like this. What I'm always on the prowl for is something new. I'm always looking for something new and unique that, that has these characteristics because, um, and you know, a lot of times I'm looking for these books uh, with independence. Uh, I think at the time this was... Uh, was it Mirage Comics, I believe, put out the Ninja Turtles? And then, um, I don't know, later were picked up by other publishers. But I'm always looking for these elements. Uh, unique artistic style, that's one. Adult theming in the book, uh, that's two. And the third element, and probably the most important element, is that whatever it is that I'm looking at, this potential key sleeper, is based on something successful from the past. And Eastman and Laird did this with the Ninja Turtles. Eastman and Laird did, is essentially what they did was they took Daredevil and um, Stick and Daredevil and they've kind of expanded the crew. And um, that was kind of the, uh, I don't know, maybe the spark that led to developing the Ninja Turtles the way they are. These early Ninja Turtles covers are just, they're just gorgeous. Um, the, most of them, if not all of them, were wraparound covers. The details were fantastic. Like here's number five, and you can see like there's the Fugitoid who is a, a friend of the, the Ninja Turtles. But the violence and gore in these books was pretty extensive. Um, you know, look at number six. And you can see as the issues moved on, uh, from the, the early ones were kind of, uh, I don't know, it was the word mono, uh, monochromatic. They didn't, they didn't use a whole lot of colors. And this one here is one of the, I, I think it's a beautiful cover with this green, white, and black. But, um, but you can see, uh, again, like I said, wraparound covers, nearly all of them. Um, and then, you know, Here's like number eight has April O'Neil in sort of this, I don't know, service style costume. I'm not sure what's going on with that. It's been a long time since I read it. But um, fantastic. Very unique. Very creative. Very original. Um, and then, like I said, took something from the past and expanded upon it and made it, uh, made it into something new and unique. So let me show you a series that's come out recently that I jumped on and I jumped on it because I think it's got potential to be a future sleeper hit and it embodies all the characteristics that I've mentioned. 
So, Kit Wallace and Garrett Gunn's series, Little Red Ronin, I think has tremendous potential and has all those key elements that I mentioned earlier that the Ninja Turtles had early on. I'm really proud of this uh, group of books that I've got. I was really, really high on, on this series. Uh, I felt the, the incredibly unique art style of Kit Wallace uh, really resonates through this whole series. The first few books that I have are cover A's, uh, and I have a couple cover B's, so let me just go through what I have. This uh, is issue number one, cover A, by Kit Wallace. Uh, again, it's uh, Source Point Press, and I just love the this imagery that is created with the teeth. This is issue one, cover B, and this is Little Red Ronin issue number two, cover A. And this is uh, Little Red Run in issue three, cover A. The ones that I am most proud of and think have the highest potential are these. These are the cover C's. These were a one per store exclusive. So you know the run is incredibly low with this group. They were all done by Kit Wallace. Uh, issue one is this um, red and black throwback to... Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one with the the blade here uh, in the uh, the title and it's just a, a beautiful beautiful cover um, I really like the perspective that's in it this is issue number two cover C and this is a really slick one I love what Kit Kowalis did with this sort of this reflection on the blade this is uh, Little Red Ronin looking at the blade of the samurai sword and can see the big bad wolf in the background. But uh, the detailing is fantastic. Uh, lots of little details. Uh, just a really great cover. Very unique. Uh, I like the titling, which also kind of throws back to the Ninja Turtles, you know, with uh, Eastman and Laird. This is a Wallace and Gunn. And this issue, this is issue number three. I'm going to bring it close so you can see. Uh, there's um, a little bit better detailing of some of the other characters in the story. And there are a number of unique characters. I think this series has tremendous potential to sort of expand this universe. Um, the main characters in this story are obviously Little Red Ronin and her friend Dave. And um, I'm not really sure what's going on here. This... I I think this is um, Usagi Yojimbo, <laughs> just sort of kind of like you know, popping out in the front of the of the story. So um, it could be another character. I don't know, but very, very uh, similar to that character. And uh, I love it. I love it. I think Kit Wallace is highly underrated. And um, I really hope that there were enough sales of this series to sort of push um source point press and coming up with another volume but these books these uh, exclusive one per store um exclusive variants this cover c they uh they're still out there they're i i would say i've seen them somewhere between 15 and 25 dollars some uh in the 30s and uh they're very attainable and i just want to be able to share these with you so that you could sort of see what they look like, great storyline, um, has uh, extreme gore, uh, profanity, some adult themes. So as you can see, this series has all of the elements that were present in the early Ninja Turtles books. A unique artistic style, adult themes, and it's based on something successful from the past. I believe you can take these key elements to find the next great big hit. Wallace and Guns, Little Red Ronin. I think it's a fantastic throwback to the Ninja Turtles. I hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and give this video a like. I've got a 150 subscriber giveaway coming up. I'm going to be giving away a slabbed copy 
of Amazing Spider-Man 55, a 9.4. It could be yours. So check out the video and leave a comment on that video. And please subscribe. Keep Let's keep pushing these numbers up uh, so that I can get to 100 and then 125 and 150. So thank you for tuning in and happy hunting.